Hello, and welcome to the lecture for the TI Precision Lab discussing instrumentation amplifiers. Specifically, when do you use an instrumentation amplifier? To recap from the previous lecture, an instrumentation amplifier, or IA, can be idealized as an electrical circuit that amplifies the signals that differ between its inputs and rejects the signals that are the same on both inputs. IAs are excellent at extracting weak or small signals from noisy environments and delivering an amplified result to be precisely processed. They play a vital role in many applications. Everything from precision data acquisition to signal amplification and critical medical instrumentation. Let's take, for instance, hospital measurement systems comprised of multiple sensors. These sensors include blood pressure sensors, temperature sensors, heart rate monitors, and more. Hospitals can be one of the most electrically noisy environments, with hundreds of medical devices generating electrical noise in addition to the power line 60 Hz noise. The noise signal coming from these sources can be much larger in magnitude than the useful signal which needs to be measured. Frequently, IAs are used for amplifying signals coming from hospital system sensors because IAs can reject external noise common to both inputs and provide precise signal amplification. Here's an example of an IA enabling accurate heart rate tracking in a typical electrocardiogram application. The heart generates a series of electrochemical impulses which causes the cells to contract and expand, thus pumping blood through the body. This electrochemical action can be measured at the surface of the body, giving an electrocardiogram or an EKG plot. Here is a typical EKG waveform. A voltage potential of approximately 1 millivolt develops between electrodes attached to various points on the body. The signal can be processed by using an IA. The IA provides the amplification of the EKG signal while rejecting the common mode noise signals, including the 60 Hz power line noise and its harmonics. Let's now consider a sensor which converts a physical phenomenon, like temperature or pressure, into resistance. We can convert this change in resistance to a measurable voltage using a bridge sensor. This bridge sensor is commonly referred to as a Wheatstone or resistive bridge because all the legs are resistive elements which are used to conduct force and pressure measurements. The resistance of the legs change in response to a mechanical strain. When an excitation voltage, VE, is applied to the bridge and all resistances are equal between VE and ground, by basic resistive division, the voltage at sig minus and sig plus equals half the excitation voltage. In a system, the differential voltage, or VD, is the difference between sig plus and sig minus. This represents the amount of force or pressure acting upon the sensor. When this sensor is acted upon, opposite resistors in the bridge change in proportion. If the resistance of one leg increases by delta R, the resistance of the opposite leg will decrease by delta R. Consequently, the voltage at sig plus and sig minus points will be offset from the nominal VE divided by 2 value. This offset is the differential voltage which we want to measure. The common mode voltage, or VCM, is the voltage present at both terminals that we want to reject, which in this case is VE divided by 2. The full scale differential voltage is typically in the 1 millivolt to 100 millivolt range. Given that this voltage is usually fed to an ADC converter downstream, it may need to be amplified in order to utilize the ADC's full dynamic range. IAs are commonly used for this purpose because they have the ability to amplify the differential input voltage and reject the common mode input voltage. Let's take an example where all resistive legs are 1 kiloohm elements and a sensitivity of 10 millivolts per volt is being used with a 5 volt excitation. The differential full-scale voltage in this case is 50 millivolts. We may want to amplify this voltage in order to utilize the full-scale range of the ADC. Therefore, if we want a full-scale output of 5 volts, we need a gain of 100 volts per volt. Looking at the waveform to the right, we can see that sig plus and sig minus deviate from half the excitation voltage in proportion to the applied force. The instrumentation amplifier extracted and amplified only the differential voltage, rejecting the common 2.5 volts to yield a full-scale output of 5 volts from a 50 millivolt differential input. This is an important and frequent slide to this series as it recaps the fundamental functions of an instrumentation amplifier and explains when a designer should consider an IA.
If you have an application where you are trying to measure only the differential voltage riding on a common mode voltage, you should consider instrumentation amplifiers. That concludes our second video, discussing when to use an IA.